tips and tutorials to increase your online presence. Websites, social media, online donations, applications, databases, and more. This is OrgSpring. So in this video, we are going to show you how to create a simple product inside of WooCommerce. This is the second video of a series of WooCommerce videos for WordPress. The first video was installing and configuring WordPress and the WordPress settings. So in this video, uh, one of a series of other videos where we'll cover different types of products, and there are several of them. Uh, this one we will go through and create a simple product. The way we add products, no matter what type of product it is, is here under WooCommerce, you'll see another one called products. And there you'll see products. So if we click on products, it will give us a listing of all the products on your site. You'll notice there are no products found. That's because we haven't added any products. So we're going to click on this button up here, add product. Another way to do it would be under the products menu in the admin area, just to click the add product button. Either way will get us to the same place. And this brings us to the add product screen. And there's a couple things we need to publish a product, very simply. We need to add a product name or a title. Now what we're going to do is we are going to just create a sample product as if we were selling a t-shirt. So we do that by putting the title in here. The Org Spring t-shirt. Then we put some information here and this shows up in a very specific area and I'm going to show you how to enter that information. We'll put some general product information. Our t-shirt is made of cotton and comes in several sizes. We'll make a note about purchases Every purchase you make will we'll say that we're going to donate portions of this purchase. Porsche, having trouble spelling, a portion of every purchase you make goes to charity. Simple. Leave that. Now you will notice product data. This relates to, I'm going to move this up, some of these other things you see here like layout settings, WordPress custom fields. These relate to other plugins that we have installed. I'm actually going to clear those out of the way by clicking on screen options. I'm going to get rid of some of these data things here. So what you'll see underneath your content box, <clears throat> excuse me, is product data. And you have different ways to um, put settings onto your product. What we're going to select is what's selected here, simple product. And we have different product types, and we'll get into that as we go along. But a simple product is one that is uh, simple, I guess, to say. Uh, and, and we'll get into what that means. Uh, simple product generally is just something that has one price, no specials, no sales, no attributes, no different variations like uh, you know, like a, a t-shirt might normally have uh, different sizes, things like that. We're just going to leave this pretty simple. Uh, if it were something we were selling only online, we would click this virtual button that obviously has no shipping. If it were downloadable like a file or a piece of music, we would click that there to be downloadable. And we have different tabs here, you'll see. <clears throat> have a general tab. Uh, and this gives us the ability to add an SKU or a SKU number. We'll also add our regular price here. So let's just call this a $20 t-shirt. And then if we were running a sale between certain dates, we could put a sale price. So this would be a permanent sale, uh, or we could actually schedule that sale to happen between certain days upon which a sale price would come into effect. We're going to leave that sale price blank for now and just go with a regular price of $20. We have the ability to control stock management. So if we want to manage stock, we could check that there and then set a certain number in stock. We can also add shipping in terms of pound, dimension, and then add a shipping class, which would then trigger shipping on the cart. We don't need to do that. 
If you wanna link it to other products, we would add those here. We'll cover that in a separate tutorial. And then if there are attributes, we can add those here. So for example, if the product is being offered in red, blue, green, that kind of thing for now, we're just gonna add a simple product. And then you have the ability to do some advanced things like uh, to set the menu order, to enable reviews on this product, and to uh, put a purchase note there. We're going to leave those things blank. So essentially all we've done is set a regular price inside our purchase price area, regular price in the general area. And then we're going to leave everything else blank. We're also not going to add a picture and we're just going to publish this. So essentially what we've done is we've added a title, we've added some basic content and we've set a price and then we published it. Now we're going to view this product in a new tab and you'll see what WooCommerce does with your product. It adds a simple product page. It's showing us a blank image here. It's giving us the title. It's telling us the cost. It's giving us the ability to add certain quantities and then add to cart. And then it's showing us the product description below in a description tab. And this is the text that we added. And then any reviews that might be added will be listed here. It shows us that there are no reviews yet. So the description down below the product is the text that we added. So looking at the product, this description gets added actually below the product in a tab. If we want information to come up here to help us sell, we're going to add that down below in what's called the product short description. And we could add text here. You really should purchase this product. It will make you look very cool. And we'll resave this or update it. We'll come back to our product on the front end and we will refresh that. And you'll notice the text we added shows up under the title and price next to the image. You really should purchase this product. It will make you look very cool. So depending on where you put text into your product, it will make that text show up in different areas of the product page itself. Now we're going to add an image. You'll notice this image is 300 by 300 square that was set back in your image settings. Knowing that product size for the image is very important, especially when we go to add images here, and I'll show you why it makes a difference. So we're going to set a featured image, and we're going to use a small image, so we're gonna come down to the media library, and we're gonna click on this, it's gonna tell us that this image is 120 by 120, which is smaller than our 300 by 300. So I'm gonna set that product image. It's going to show down there, and then I'm going to click Update. Now you can see that this is a relatively clear image, even though it's a smaller image. But when I go to the front end, to my product page, and I refresh it, that image, because we have it set as a hard crop, that image is going to be distorted because our product image is 300 by 300. Our actual image we uploaded is only 120 by 120. So it takes that 120 pixel image and it changes the size to fit the product image of 300. That's why we have the distortion there. So if you don't want your product to look distorted, you need to choose an image that is at least as big as the WooCommerce product image setting, which in our case is 300 by 300. So we're going to remove that featured image and we're going to set another image which we know is at least 300 by 300. So let's look at the different images we have here. You'll notice this one is 1600 by 1200. That certainly fits the bill. This one as well. So you could pick one on your site that is at least that size. So let's go with this one which is 640 by 480 and we will set product image. Then we will click update once again, go to the front end and look at our site. And you'll see that image is much more clear. And it happens not to be a great image for a product, but there's no distortion there because it was at least as big as the product image size. 
Now, if you want to change this overall image size, you'll need to do that with some code or some CSS changes on your website. We'll get into that uh, at a later tutorial. So the last thing we're going to talk about in relation to creating a basic product is adding multiple images to a product. And this might come in handy, for example, if you have, again, here we're talking about a t-shirt, and of course we don't use a t-shirt picture, but if you were selling a t-shirt or a mug or something similar, you might have multiple images, maybe a front and a back or uh, side images or different images, even different colors. You might want to show the difference between a red and a black t-shirt. So you do that through the image gallery. So here you'll see on back in the admin panel, we're looking at the settings for this product. We have a widget here on the side called the product gallery. And if we click here, this gives us the ability to add different images. So we're just gonna click a few images here to add. We'll add these four images and click add to gallery. And you'll see it adds them in a little gallery setting here. We will update that. and then we'll refresh the view on the front end. And you'll notice how WooCommerce adds them. It adds them as little thumbnail tabs down here. And now we have multiple images, so if we click on one, it'll open that in a light box. And then we could look through all of the different images for the product. Now there is a setting here that will allow that to change. That, by default, opens up in light box settings. If we go back into the settings of WooCommerce, and we look at our products view, I'm sorry, it's actually in the general view here, and we disable this enable light box, so uncheck the light box, save that change, and then you go back and we'll refresh this page to load that change. You'll see the images here again, and when we click on this, it loads the actual image rather than loading that in a light box. The only problem with this is it takes us away from the flow of the page and your viewer or your potential customer might get lost. So I tend to like leaving on the light box feature. They do make some other plugins that allow you to load that image directly here when you're viewing. Uh, through different images in the product gallery. Some of those are premium plugins, some of those are free. You can find them online or in the WooCommerce extensions folder. So that covers pretty much everything you could do with simple products. As you add other extensions and more functionality to Woo WooCommerce, again, some of them premium, meaning paid, and some of them free, you can add additional options for things that you could do with your WooCommerce products, like changing the names of the buttons for the cart, getting rid of this in terms of your quantity selector, having additional tabs show up, editing these things here. Uh, we'll get into that in later videos. Uh, the next video we'll cover are uh, adding additional types of products. There are several products that you can add out of the box with WooCommerce stock. We're gonna discuss those as well.